see that everyone please exit the chamber in the right of our stairwell, proceed to the ground floor and exit the building. Allow for emergency personnel then. Thank you very much. Um, Coleman Davis, would you, would you like to come up and, and sit at your future spot next to uh, the wall? Perfectly fine to get a chair. That's where we start.
Jennifer Schwartz Berkey. Thank you. On Thursday evening, my fellow Kingston. Jennifer. Oh, yes, 30 Jennifer Schwartz Berkey, 35 Holland Street, Kingston, New York. On Thursday evening, my fellow Kingston Landmark, uh, Kingston Historic Landmark Preservation Commissioners and I will recommend the Alms House at 300 Flatbush Avenue for your approval as a local landmark. Tonight, as we discuss the landmarking of the historic Alms House at every level, local, state, and federal, we must recognize that historic preservation has become the hallmark of successful communities. The tax credits available to developers through landmarking have helped cities across the country to restore pride in their communities, created over 2.5 million jobs, leveraged over $117 billion in private investment, and preserved more than 40,000 buildings. The Alms House is a unique and important community gateway that is an attribute to Kingston. In contrast, most other development, like for example, big box stores or chain developments contribute little to the local economy as compared to a locally owned and run business that could successfully reuse the alms house. We must clarify those, these historic designations and corresponding tax credits as essential. These credits are ultimately about state and federal governments investing in a proven local revitalization strategy. Local homeowners are protected by historic designation that are protected by historic designation will have extra incentives to invest in and maintain their properties with these credits. The rich history of the Hudson Valley is exemplified by the city of Kingston, and we have an obligation to preserve and enhance its beautiful legacy. Alderman Will and County Legislator Donaldson have been instrumental in supporting this mission of preserving the Alms House and the surrounding community. We are fighting the pandemic of suburban sprawl that has drained our city center of resources, consumers, and local pride. Landmarking the Alms House is a perfect example of how we can blend heritage of our community with progress towards a beautiful future. Across the country, the most successful economic developments in older cities like Kingston use historic preservation to attract today's best, most cost-effective, and quality jobs. For too long, the Hudson Valley has suffered from the migration of so many of our promising, talented, and educated young minds. We owe it to ourselves and to our rich history to give them an incentive to stay and make us stronger and a more vibrant community. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Kathy McCullough. Good evening. I'm Catherine McCullough, Kitty McCullough, um, and I live at 101 Beale Street, and I also want to speak in favor of the Alms House. Uh, a lot of you know I'm, a, I'm all about Midtown uh, being a place rather than a corridor or the uh, bar of a barbell. And I invite you to think of the Alms House as a gateway to Midtown Kingston. It leads right into neighborhoods. A lot of people I say that to look at me quizzically because they don't even know there's any Midtown over there. They don't know that there are neighborhoods over there and businesses over there. But we have the opportunity to begin to own all of those neighborhoods in Midtown and make them places once again. And I encourage you to do that. And if you do come in that way, uh, past the Alms House, you'll see that there are a number of other derelict um, former industrial buildings there and a few others throughout the city that could be landmarked and uh, sent on to the state and federal government for tax credits, and that might help us sell those too. It might help us make those more competitive than some of the other places that today shoppers with small businesses um, and um, maker market and small manufacturing like Richard Frimis and Ann Bailey, who you're real familiar with, we might have the opportunity to move some of those people if we landmark more buildings. So I encourage you to think about that. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Thank you. Philip Gerber.
Philip Guerrero, 28 Beats Court, Kingston. First, I would like to ask, are we ever going to get our public TV back? Or has that been put on a permanent reservation, thanks to Mr. DeFalco and Mr. Simic, that went out of their way to aggravate the landlord and then pull all our equipment down? Two, are we going to get green commitments and do something about all the violence in the city? In other words, all the pesticides being green. Oh, pesticides have the only evil to the enemy. Has nothing to do with people. And three, the business district taking their, uh, what do you call it, business taxes away and make, turning them into uh, homesteads. Give them a tax break for five years at zero interest and lower it. And welcome. You want an economy? Commit the city to organic. And I guarantee you, you can market globally. Don't bring your business here. Bring an annex. We are prepared to welcome in a new age and let the vampires and their blood of Mother Nature go into the fables. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. That's it. Anyone in the audience that would like to address the council at this time? See no one I now declare the public speaking portion of this meeting closed.
question. Hearing no discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The resolution is adopted. Senator Bureau, we now go to resolution number 182. Resolution number 182 of 2015, resolution of the Common Council of the City of Kingston, New York, authorizing the expenditure of $36,629,000 uh, $36,629.45 for payment of the Herzog's Home Paint Center bill for the materials for the Peter Lane 2 project. On the question, well, I'd like to make a motion. We're going to make a motion to amend this resolution uh, to have the payment made out to the Peter Lane of Kingston. Uh, after which time uh, the grant monies are received so the uh, city will be reimbursed. It's okay, I have a first, do I have a second? Second. Okay, I have a first and a second. On the amended resolution. No discussion? A call for the vote. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed? The resolution is adopted. 7-0, the amendment, now we're going to vote on the amended resolution. On the question. Hearing no discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The resolution is adopted as amended. Seven zero. We now move on to resolution number 183. Resolution number 183 of 2015, resolution of the Common Council of the City of Houston, New York, requesting proposals to develop a plan for a well-connected, safe, and functional active transportation network. On the question, all in favor. No. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, I, I think this is a great first step in implementing safer streets, uh, or at least developing a plan for safer streets and to implement traffic calming. Bring together all the plans that we have to make the city more walkable and more likable. I, I think this will be in line with other initiatives that have come from the council, whether it's the, uh, the, the comprehensive plan, the gap, the infrastructure gap assessment, uh, the climate action plan, or the development of the CAC. Uh, I know that when I've walked and talked to constituents in my ward, that one of the things that they often complain about is speeding vehicles and that they don't feel safe walking in their neighborhoods. To the extent, and this is something that we've kicked around on committees and amongst ourselves, and that we just don't know what we can do to help make our city safer for our constituents. So this will allow to give us some information in terms of what steps that we can take and hopefully the end result will give us what results we can, what steps we can take to help make our city safer, to help make it more walkable and more bikeable. And so that ultimately our residents feel safer walking, biking, doing whatever it is uh, in non-motorized vehicles. Um, so the other things that I'd like to point out is that the finance committee did agree to move forward with any financial support after we receive uh, the results from the RFP, and I hope that we will follow through with that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on the question? All in session. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to echo all of those uh, remarks about constituents, and I would say that all the issues over the last year or so, uh, bike paths and safety, travel both for uh, pedestrians and bicyclists has uh, generated a lot of uh, comment. Uh, more particularly, I'd say it runs well over 95% in favor of uh, the bike paths. Even, even if there's some controversy about Broadway, uh, almost to a man on that, everybody said they would like to see the bike paths uh, segregated on Broadway and elsewhere. And, uh, you may think that we should consider uh, expanding the bike paths throughout the city. I can say I've been other places where there's extensive bike paths and it really is an economic drive. Thank you. Anyone else on the question? I think the discussion came up for this resolution is that we've had three different studies around the city and 
the idea was to try to connect them all between the Green Line and Safe Routes and the, um, bringing a building a better broader. And I think this will help kind of make it cohesive. Thank you. Anyone else? President? Well, I'd like to acknowledge uh, using Brian's session my microphone since mine is not working. So. You always had that problem. Huh? I always have a problem. Um, I, I missed this committee meeting. Uh, but I think this is a great idea. I fully support it. Uh, I can say that in, in the third ward, I've heard from constituents on Boulevard, Pearl Street, Linderman Ave, Miller's Ave, um, and uh, well, Washington to, to some degree. But I think that this will be this will have a really positive effect in traffic calming in, 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 in a very real way and help uh, in a, provide safe travel for pedestrians and, and bicyclists, so uh, it has my full support. Thank you. Anyone else on the question? Okay, no one else. I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Opposed? Resolution is adopted. 7-0. And now we move on to the resolution number 184. Resolution 184 of 2015, resolution of the Common Council of the City of Kingston, New York, authorizing the sum of $700,000 
reviewing a candidate's uh, qualifications after the application has been submitted and accepted. So that's that, there, there are a lot of ways that we can take a look at this and work with the Civil Service Commission. And uh, but I think that the, the, the underlying uh, message here is is we're really <coughs> helping out uh, people in, in, uh, who are disadvantaged and, and have been having a hard time uh, once they they've been released from prison after serving their time and uh, paying their uh, due to society. So uh, I encourage my colleagues to uh, support this resolution. Thank you. Does anyone else have a question? Hello, Hello. Uh, I too am very much in favor and support this resolution, uh, but uh, I agree with what Alderman Will mentioned about people who are who have been incarcerated who are now entering the workforce. But there are so many people who have made mistakes and have been charged with crimes and have paid for those crimes who are not incarcerated. And this, without this resolution, they are greatly affected. And so there's another whole population, and, and uh, I work with many of those individuals. And the best thing about this resolution, it, it gives people the opportunity to be interviewed. And it gives the individual the opportunity to uh, show that they have changed and that they have grown and, and they're not the person that they were previously. And, and this is a wonderful opportunity, and I very much in favor and, and proud to go yes on this. Thank you. Anyone else on the question before I call for the vote? Seeing no one else, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Resolution is adopted. 7 0. We go to resolution number 187. Resolution 187 of 2015, resolution of the Common Council of the City of Kingston, New York. Supporting the consideration and inclusion of 300 Flatbush Avenue, Kingston, New York, in the state and national registers of historic places. On the question. There is no discussion. Don. I'm glad that we're taking this step to uh, show our support to, to protect and designate a building that's historic. And in line with that, I hope in this next budget season that we take steps to maintain and preserve and fix our historic building in line with the celebration that we had for Ed Ford and their dedication for the Lunette. We should similarly take those steps for our house and especially what we look at every month. So uh, I'd encourage us to take those steps in this way. Thank you. And congratulations to all those who worked on, on, on uh, advocating for the protection and the designation of this book. Anyone else on the question? Follow me well. Okay. 
26 history, so we have a number of great properties that are already listed and districts and uh, Tuco and, and so forth. But, you know, where it's been shown, UPAC is, is a historic registered property and they uh, are a thriving business. Um, the Lace Mills factory is now uh, housing for, for artists and, that, and the uh, owner there uh, took it upon themselves to, to seek listing for that property and, and, and proceeded to uh, invest heavily in that in development. So th th this is a, a good thing and people see the value in um, listing properties and, and recognizing their historic nature. So uh, I'm definitely a yes vote. Thank you. Anyone else on the question? Before I call for the vote. Seeing no one else, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Oh, resolution is adopted, 70, remember resolution number 188. Resolution number 188 of 2015, resolution of the Common Council of the City of Kingston, New York, recommending approval for modifications to the 2015 general budget. On the question, hearing no discussion, I'm going to vote. All in favor?
Street, I should have been there back in 1860, which was never built. And so we're going to keep it as Orchard Street, it's not going to be true. I just be sure of the members, I mean the residents, thank you. Anyone else on the question? If no one else, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Opposed? Resolution is adopted. 7 0. Okay, so yeah, that takes care of the resolutions for this evening. So we just have some other business we need to take care of this evening. So um, I'll start with the, the, the council at our office last night decided to do. Uh, uh, a fund to help defray the cost of the funerals for the four individuals that we uh, did a moment of silence for. So it, it was so early, or so quickly decided that we really couldn't set up an account or anything. So we're, we're collecting money, all the money contributing, and it'll be cash, and, and Carly's handling it. And uh, the city received a, a notice today that they can contribute also. And uh, I think we're waiting until at least Friday. They get paid on Friday, so this way they'll have some money. And I'm sure some of them like to donate. <coughs> then I believe the funds were going to go to, uh, I think it was an online uh, pledge set up to fund my, to find my and we're going to, uh, whatever we collect, we're going to donate it to them, just so everyone knows. Okay, is everybody okay with that? Good. Okay. Okay, before I uh, ask for a uh, uh, motion to adjourn, we do have someone that is leaving us uh, this evening. It will be our last council meeting. I know everybody is happy for it. You know, and I'm going to leave with her, but I mean, you know, personally, myself, it's, it's been a pleasure and honor to serve with you, yeah, Lisa. And she represented me in my board the six board, and Tony's coming in, I'm sure, you know, she'll help him out a little bit, tell him what not to do and what to do. I'll, I'll miss her, and she's always been a, a you know, voice of reason on the council. So I'm going to open it up to the other aldermen if they wish to say something. And then uh, at least at the end, we'll be able to uh, have a say with us. Okay? If anyone else that would like to uh, comment? What we're doing? I mean, all of them done. At least it's truly really been a pleasure. Anybody who's willing to step up and, 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 and fight to represent their ward and take the hits and take the take the love and it, it, it's just it, it's a it's a great thing and the fact that you did it you did it numerous times and and it's truly it's truly been a pleasure working with you and you, you know we've been through some fights and then advocating on issues which is which was great and it's at the end of the day we're always able to say it's the way it is go our separate ways and come back and still be friends. So thank you for serving, and I hope you stay involved, and wish you the best of luck in the future. Mr. President. Well, I'm Brown. Well, Lisa and I came on the council together, and it was nice to see another female face. Um, I think this is the first time we've had three, yeah, three women, and that was kind of historic. Um, Elise has been a, a, an advocate for the board, Sometimes we were really an advocate, <laughs> which is a good thing. And uh, it was always good to bounce ideas back and forth. She likes to text, so we would text things back and forth. So we're going to miss you, Lisa. Enjoy your life. Yeah. Well, chat. Yeah, I would also just like to say thank you. Anyone that does public service such as this deserves a public thank you. Thank you for your service.
I know, you know, privately we've had great conversations, but I feel publicly as well that um, I want to thank you. And especially when we first started out, we, we bounced a lot of ideas off each other and kind of you know, wondered what we were getting into together. And, um, I appreciate those times, and uh, I, I learned a lot from you, and uh, especially how you stood up to some, some early fire in your tenure, and uh, luckily you're going out on, on a much happier note, and I'm, I'm very happy for you. Well, it's actually, again, uh, see if you can no microphone that works after uh, the Anyway, Alyssa, uh, as you know, I've uh, been happy to see you, uh, help you get started on your first election. Uh, where I think everyone is glad to see you, uh, if not uh, happy to see you leave, at least happy to see you going on to your new life. So uh, congratulations and best of luck to you.
American, who was, uh, as everybody knows, an absolute giant in the city. Um, I really just started getting to know Abel over this past the length of my term, and uh, I, he was a very genuine person. Um, he was sincere, and uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. Um, I was really shocked when I learned about his death in Cape Cod, um, and I, I really don't want to sound presumptuous, but he, he uh, really brought back my own father and grandfather to me uh, in, in many ways um, that I don't need to elaborate. But uh, he was quite a man and touched so many of our lives. And uh, uh, if you knew him for five minutes or you know, 50 years, he was, uh, he was a, 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 you know, a very community minded individual. <coughs> and uh, I know his family is going to feel a, a huge void. So I just want to uh, share it with his memory. Thank you. Anyone else? All in session. Thank you. Um, although technically a resident of the sixth ward, uh, my uh, good friend and uh, someone I went to school with, uh, Jay Rose, Walter J. Rose, uh, originally, you know, from Woodstock, uh, passed away, uh, you know, untimely, yet even though 57, still a very young man. Uh, anybody who knew Jay, uh, you know, knew he was up for fun and good times, whatever. And uh, typically, even though he's been quite ill for a couple of years, you know, he, he was going right up to the end. Um, you know, he's pleased behind his wife, Joanne, his two daughters, uh, and uh, a lot of a lot of members and a lot of people. I mean, I think anybody who was at the funeral home, you know, saw the, uh, you know, for someone of uh, Jay's age, the uh, line around and around and around the, the block at the beginning to say goodbye to Jay. So it's just uh, certainly a little missing. And uh, an odd thing that after you know, so many years, we ended up living about a block apart. Uh, so uh, to his family, our condolences. Thank you. I, I just want to add, Jay, just to demonstrate for me, and he was a good friend, and you know, Joanne and the kid, I see all the time. So I want to have a reciprocate.